I'm Ben Gramico from Internachi, and today we're going to do a home inspection. And what I want to do is show you how I do a home inspection and how I write an inspection report. And the cool thing is I'm going to show you how I write an inspection report using my iPhone because my software is on my phone. I'm going to show you how I take pictures and videos, how I create a summary really quick, and how I find defects for my client. Okay, so the first thing I do when I pull up during an inspection is, well, I'm here early, so I'm gonna see if anyone is inside. Um, and I'll knock on the door, but I'll get ready for my client to pull up just like I did. And I'll have my business cards ready and a big smile for a really good first impression. Okay, so let's knock on the door, see if anybody's home, and then we'll get to our equipment, like unloading my ladder and my tool uh, bag. And I'll show you what's in my tool bag as well. Okay, let's go. Okay, so no one's home, but we have access to the property, so we're gonna have a lot of fun. And um, the next thing is I want to unload my ladder and set that up because I wanna do the hardest thing first, which is the roof inspection. And I know from the MLS and the information that I got from the real estate agent that um, this is a towel roof, so I'm not walking on the, on the roof. Um, I don't have to walk upon any roof surface according to the standards of practice, so I'm going to stay safe. But let's say I wanted to walk on a roof, I'm not going to because tile under my load is just going to crack. So we don't want to damage the roof. So let's unload the ladder, set it up, let's grab my toolbox, and I'll show you what's in my tool bag, okay? Let's do that next. Okay, so I am in the back now. Um, it's a safer place. So ladders are really dangerous. So I want a nice safe place, nice uh, level, stable ground on which I'm gonna set my ladder. Uh, I've got the safety um, position, right? So you stand in front of a ladder and should be about an arm's length away. So that's a good angle. And I'm gonna um, tie up the front, uh, sorry, the top of the ladder rung to the gutter just to make sure. We have the, the about three feet above the gutter, just for safety. It's not windy. Um, I'm not gonna use a drone or anything or binoculars. So this is a pretty safe installation here of my ladder and I'm ready to go up. Again, it's a towel roof, so I'm not gonna walk on, on the roof surface. I don't need to. I'm not required to walk upon any roof surface, but I'm gonna get to the gutter's edge and uh, I wanna check out a few things. One of them is I know that there's a fireplace in the house. So I wanna check out the chimney. I'm gonna add that section to the report. And I wanna take a look at any other vents that penetrate the roof. So um, I'm gonna set this up. I'm gonna grab a couple more tools. I'll show you my tool bag in the front of the house. And then uh, we'll head up on the roof. All right, let's go. Okay, so we set up the ladder and now we're in the front. And before we start doing the home inspection, I wanna show you my tools. So I'm wearing a few of them, uh, really important things for the exterior and maybe the crawl space or basement or attic, um, my, my knee pads. Um, and this is my basic tool bag. Uh, it's not much in it. It has my flashlight, um, screwdriver, voltage tester, GFCI tester, things that I use a lot. The other things that I may not use a lot of, um, I bring to the front door because I'm ready to go. I don't like to go from the house to the truck just to get a tool. So I try to bring everything to the front door because we're trying to manage our time and be efficient. Um, and so one of the most important tools I have are my indoor only shoes um, because I respect other people's property and I don't want to be blamed for um, tracking in dirt. So I'll, I'll actually take a, a picture of this and put it in the report, or at least I'll have a picture of it. Got my FLIR C2 camera. Uh, this is about $500, pretty affordable. Um, it makes me, a uh, better home inspector because it allows me to see things that other inspectors can't see. Uh, you don't need a very expensive infrared camera. Um, these tools are the best. Um, this is actually a gardening tool. It's a three-tine hoe. It's extendable. And one of the tines I heated up and straightened out in order to uh, poke things um, and move insulation, like at the band rim joist. So this helps me um, probe things and um, look for wood rot or damaged wood or rotten wood. So I'm on a deck here in the front 
And with this tool, I could probably inspect the condition of the wood within like a minute with this tool. The other tool I have that I really like is the Hydro Shark. It's a moisture meter. They're hard to find, um, but uh, if you want to email me, I can show you where to get it. And it's basically uh, a little audible and visual indicator. Um, as a home inspector, we don't measure things, maybe approximate the thickness of the insulation, but we don't measure like um, uh, the relative humidity levels or moisture content or anything like that. But this allows me to um, determine whether something is wet or not. So I'll, I'll probe this in a carpet or in drywall. The other things that I have, well, there's a bunch, a big tool bag of stuff um, to protect myself from breathing in nasty things in a crawl space or attic, uh, PPE. Um, another cool thing is a, a guidebook for wood destroying insects. Anything that damages wood, eats wood, this helps me be a better inspector because um, it helps me remind myself what I'm looking at and also it helps me communicate what I'm looking at. So if I wanted to communicate what I see in a more formal way, um, I can give this to my client as well. and We can discuss what we see. Um, and then I like this, this is a GFCI AFCI combination tester. So I'll be using this inside. Um, on the outside, there's no AFCI protection. So it's just my GFCI tester on the outside and in the garage and things like that. But on the inside, I'll use my AFCI tester as well. And there's a bunch of other tools that I have um, and let's see, I think I also want to show you my software. So here's my software and it's on my iPhone and I highly recommend buying software that works on a mobile device. So what I have here is Spectora and I use Spectora software and what I want to do is take a picture of the front of the house and then get ready for the rest of the inspection. So let me take a picture of the front of the house. So I'm taking a picture of the front of the house. That's very nice. I'll use that photo and it'll pop right into my software as you see and then the inspection report starts with some details and what I want to do is I'm going to go to the general inspection information and in attendance, well there's no one here but me, um, so I'm going to um, skip that. Um, let's, let's just say that the homeowner is here and the listing agent is here. Um, and then uh, occupancy, the place is occupied and it's furnished. Weather conditions, it's sunny. And I sometimes like to take a picture of the sky. So I'll just, I'll snap it real quick. That's easy. And then um, it's in a, it's a townhouse and it's, um, that's it. So I have a, I have a client didn't attend uh, paragraph here, which is really important. And um, I'll show you what it is. So it says, um, my client didn't attend. And there's a narrative about when my client doesn't attend, they're missing out on a lot of things. And we actually love when our clients attend the inspection so that they can address their concerns. I can answer all their questions. And it's really good for me because I don't want to answer the phone call um, that they have, all these phone calls coming afterwards. I want them here with me and I'm going to talk, inspect, and teach them how their home works, how to maintain it, and how to save energy all at the same time. And when I'm done with the inspection, I'm done with everything. But if my client isn't here, well, I want that in the report to remind them that they made a mistake not being here. Okay, well, not made a mistake, but they lost an opportunity. Then I have a few other things that I wanna slam in here in my inspection report, like what really matters in a home inspection. There are really four things that matter during an inspection. And one of them is uh, major defects. And those are things that I both observe and deem to be major and things that may lead to a defect. Um, like a flashing problem that may lead to a roof leak. Um, I'm going to remind my client to read their book and to schedule their next home inspection. So while I'm here, I use that phrase a lot, while I'm here doing an inspection, I'm going to have my client schedule next year's annual home maintenance checkup. So not only am I making money now, I'm making money one year later. So schedule ahead. Um, and those are the things I want in the report itself. I have a buyback guarantee. 
I'm gonna include that and I have a $10,000 honor guarantee. So I'm gonna include that in the report. So I'm gonna go back and I know that I have to add sections. So down in my software, I have to add a section. What? Well, a chimney, because not, not every home has a fireplace with a chimney stack. So I'm gonna add my chimney section and there it pops in. I'm gonna add another section, which is this monster here. It's gonna take me another 10 minutes to do a detached garage, but I'm gonna add that. And let's see if there's anything else I need to carport, attached garage, nope, okay. So I have all my sections. First thing I do is the roof, and then we're going to the fireplace, an exterior, basement, et cetera, in my software. I'm cheating because I'm carrying my work scope, my list of things to inspect. I, don't, I, I look brilliant, I guess, because I have all this stuff in my hand, and I don't have to like, remember, what am, I, what am I supposed to do next? It's like a cheat sheet. So I'm going to go to the roof, and what on the roof am I supposed to inspect? The roof covering, the flashing, the vent pipes, and the gutters and downspouts. Is there anything else I need to add? Well, if there was a skylight, I'd add that section, and there's flue gas vent pipes. I actually took a look when I, when I was um, uh, setting up my ladder in the back that we have flue gas vent pipes, and that means I have a HVAC system that's gas-fired. So next thing is roof covering. Okay. I have a little paragraph about homeowner's responsibility because after I leave the inspection, it's their responsibility. And I have a couple other things like tile material and I was inspecting the roof from the ladder and then I can't see everything. So there's a paragraph about that. I'll show you in the report and I'm unable to walk upon the roof surface. So I'm going to add that to the report as well. And then this is the list of my defects. And this is basically why I'm here. I'm here to find anything like this. And all of these defects are pre-written. And if I find exposed fasteners, which is a defect, I'm just gonna tap it and put it in the report. But I'm gonna wait on that right now. Right now, I'm going to take pictures of everything that I inspect. I'm going to then select the defect sentences or narratives, we call them. And then I'm gonna do a video. So I'll show you that process. So let's go to the back. That's where my ladder is set up. I have my tools set up um, and we have access to the entire place. I have my software ready to go. We're in the roof section and we're gonna look for defects. So let's do that next. Okay, so I'm on the roof, not really. I'm up to the gutter's edge. This is very safe for me. If you don't feel safe on a ladder, don't go up, okay? Um, I'm really excited because right in front of my face is a major defect. So right now, personally, like in my head, I feel like I've earned my money because this is a major defect. It's going to cost probably $500 to fix. Okay. And that's more value than the cost of my home inspection. Right? So that's my goal. How much value can I provide my client for the amount of money that I charge? And so I've, I've already reached it. So I'm kind of having fun. Um, so what I want to do is take a bunch of pictures. I'm, I'm going to snap like crazy. And on my iPhone, um, it's really great how they have it. So uh, I just snap with my thumb. So I'm going to take about probably 20 pictures up here, and then we'll do some video. And then I'll show you how I write the report for the roof system. So actually right here is the defect. The tile is just destroyed. So I'm going to take a picture of just about everything on the roof in general with large pictures like that. But then I want to move in and get details. And I don't have time for arrows, so I'm just using my finger. And the gutter looks okay. So I'm going to zoom in a little because I can't reach everything. There's the hood vents. They look okay. I see a vent pipe from the sewer. The chimney stack is messed up. It's got a lot of wood rot. And when I go in the attic, if we can get into the attic, I'm gonna look for roof leaks, because it's so bad. That's a chimney stack and the gas vent pipe that we added as a separate section.
And uh, if the neighbor's out, I'm gonna tell them that their gutter needs to be repaired. It's just filled with leaves and debris, so they're probably having problems with things. Okay, so now I've taken my pictures, right? Now, when I'm up here, I'm gonna keep going. So I wanna add the narratives to my inspection report. I'm gonna write their inspection report before I step down. When I get down off the ladder, I'm done with the roof system, including the inspection and the report itself. So I have cracked roofing materials. And what I'm gonna do is do a video of the cracked roofing material. And I'm gonna talk. So we have major damage at the cracked roofing material. And um, we have several damaged tiles here. So this is a tile. It's damaged. I think somebody must have stepped on it. That's my only way of figuring out why uh, this is damaged. It's my diagnosis. And there's a couple other damaged tiles. There's a damaged tile over there. There's a damaged tile there. There's a damaged tile up there. And um, it's going to cost several hundred dollars. That's awesome. Okay, so that's my video. I'm going to put right in the report itself. And I have... Um, let's see. Material defect, structural defect, too close, old system. I think that's about it. So that's my major thing. So I took pictures and I took a video of the major defect that I have. And that video is going to be in the summary. And I'll show you that in a little bit. I'm adding comments about the factory built fireplace. I have a chimney flashing defect. I'm gonna take a video of it. There's a flashing defect at the chimney stack. I'm gonna use that video. and I can't reach the chimney, I'm gonna say that as well. I can't get close to the chimney stack, but the exterior of the chimney stack is in poor condition. It's rotten and it's uh, a major defect. We need a professional to inspect the damaged vent pipe of the gas vent next to the chimney stack. I'm gonna use that video. Okay, I think I'm done, I'm gonna come down. Okay, so we came down from the roof and I just wanted to show you what I do with the software that I have to finish up the roof system. Um, oh, one of the cool things about this software is it reminds me, again, I don't have to be the most brilliant uh, home inspector, reminds me what um, it says, you're not required to walk upon any roof surface, stay safe, come back home. That's the most important thing. Um, you, wanna, you wanna come back home, nothing's more important than that. And it reminds me also, most asphalt shingles may be used on a roof slope from 412 to 2112. And if it's less than 412, which this isn't, a lot of other things for low slope applications need to be done. I don't have to remember that. And I can just look, it's like a cheat sheet when you hold a, your software in your hand. Um, so flashing, um, nothing wrong with the flashing except for the chimney and I already did that. So that's good. Plumbing vent pipes, um, homeowner responsibility paragraph, the plumbing vent pipes were inspected. I can't reach all of the plumbing vent pipes and I didn't find any defects. Um, gas vent pipes, um, there's a, a defect at a gas vent pipe damage and I'm going to um, add that photo. So I go to my photo library and there's the damage. So I just choose that picture and I can put a little arrow if I wanted to. That's kind of cool. And that's it. So I go back and I've done all those um, components or subsystems of the roof. And now I am to the, I did the chimney, I did the inspection details. Now I'm doing the exterior. So at any point of the inspection, I can stop and do a summary with my client. If my client wants uh, to review how's it going so far, in my software here, I have a little button that says summary. So we can go to the summary and here are the videos 
that I captured and attached to each um, narrative. So here's the, um, the roof defect, right? And here's the summary video. So we have major damage at the cracked roofing material. And um, we have several damaged tiles here. So this is a tile, it's damaged. I think somebody must have stepped on it. That's my only way of figuring out why uh, this is damaged. It's my diagnosis. So there's the other one, there's the vi um, vent pipe damage. So you could play a video or show your client pictures. Um, then there's the chimney flashing defect. We have the chimney exterior. You can the process again is you take pictures with your camera as fast as you can. Then you go back into the software, you select the defect, the narrative that you want in the report, the recommendation, like I observed this defect. You select that and you attach a video. So you take a short video of it. All of your defects will be video based, right? You'll be selecting narratives in your report, but there'll be a video attached to the defect. And this is important because your summary is probably the most important thing your client wants from you. And your summary is now going to be video based. But right now I'm going to just, um, I'm picture happy. So I take a lot of pictures and the siding looks okay. I mean, there's some worn out areas like that's worn out and some worn out areas down there. Uh, the window well looks great. This is a huge, big window well, but I do not like the wooden, antique wooden stairs getting out. And the steps on the side, that's not to standard, not to code. Uh, the space between the spindles is large enough for a child to fall through. So that's a defect. I'm going to put that in the report. The condition of the deck is really bad. Um, oh, and my ID is getting in the way. <laughs> um, there's a defect there. And there's really a lot, and a lot of rotten wood there. And there's rotten wood there. And uh, this downspout, I don't know where it goes, but whenever I see a downspout going underneath the deck, that's a bit of a concern because I don't know where it's discharging and hundreds of gallons of water could be discharging right next to the foundation. Um, this is a, an issue for me sometimes because um, whenever I see a lot of debris up against the bottom of a slider door or any door, um, especially an exterior door with a deck, this flashing area is critical. So when, I, when you see debris like this, that means things tend to puddle up. If it wasn't puddling up, there wouldn't be any dirt here. So things are clogging up and settling. And when it rains, I bet it puddles up and this all gets wet. And this flashing area is a, is a concern. So I'll go below here and see if I can see any indications of, of water intrusion. All right, yeah, I kind of like the siding. A little weathering. Cosmetic blemishes, really. Flaws. But the siding looks good. Light fixture. Okay, all exterior receptacles need to be GFCI protected. So this one is connected to a garden feature. I want to test this, but I'm not going to because it's an inspection restriction. You're, you're not required to do stuff like removing things and and unplugging anything. I don't want to mess this up. This isn't mine. So I'm just observing. Remember, a home inspection is a visual only inspection. It's like taking both hands behind your back and looking around. So th this is supposed to be GFCI protected. I'm going to put it in a report as an inspection restriction. And I'm actually on steps with one, two, three risers without a handrail. International Residential Code, section 311, says four risers you need a handrail. but it's a good thing I'm not a code inspector. Three risers, two risers, one riser is going to be a difficult step for a little old lady or somebody who has a, a physical challenge. They need to hold on to something. Imagine slipping right now. You can't grab onto anything. You're going to hit the ground. So I'm not a code inspector. Code says four steps. 
that's ridiculous. I'm a home inspector. I'm going to side on the safety of my client. I see three, one, two, three risers without a handrail. This is a defect. It's an easy fix. But actually, my client probably won't do it. Won't put a handrail here because it kind of messes up with the look of the deck. So my recommendations, remember, a, a seller doesn't have to do anything that I recommend, but it's my job to make recommendations. I want to take a picture of the inspection restriction. I can't get underneath this deck. So there could be a lot of things going on. I can't tell. All I know is that the surface is really aged. So I'm going to take some pictures of that. And the grading looks okay. I want the ground to be sloped away from the house. The ground is sloped away here. And we've got a lot of interesting stuff here. So. This downspout from the roof above um, is discharging right next to the house foundation, and that's not good. We want this extended away. Ideally, it would be extended with a splash block or a downspout pipe. They're probably not gonna follow my recommendations. That's okay, because um, imagine having a splash block here or a pipe here. It's just gonna get in the way of all the fun gardening stuff that people do here. So ideally, you want water to be discharged away in my head, I'm going to remember when I'm in the basement, I think there's a basement here, I'm going to look in this area and also that other downspout area to look for signs of water penetration. We got a gas meter, gas valve, pressure regulator. The rust is surfaced, no big deal. We need some sealant around there. Um, Frost-free frost hose bibs, that's good. And that's it for the exterior. When you do the exterior, you bump into other systems like the air conditioner and the electrical. So let's do the electrical. I'm gonna take some photos of all of these phone boxes. This is phone, phone. This is a disconnect for something I don't know. It's unlocked. Oh, it's a sprinkler system. I didn't see any. I'll, I'll take a look at the lawn irrigation system but I bet it doesn't work. That's, a f that's old phone and cable boxes. Here's the meter. I like to pull on it to see if it actually falls off the house. It shouldn't. Uh, underground service line, that's in good shape. Sometimes the connection is bad and it should be locked. So we're good there. This is the electric panel. It's unlocked. Maybe you're from the East Coast, so this is an odd thing to have an electrical panel on the outside unlocked, but um, some states are like this. And let me help you see what I see. So this is the dead front cover. Oh, I'll take a picture. This is the dead front cover. This is a Zinsco panel. I can tell by this type of breakers and the color of the breakers. Um, this is the main disconnect group. So three uh, throws, they call them, uh, is good. But this is a Zinsco panel and there's no labeling and this is a defect. Zinsco electrical panels have been recalled and they have inherent problems where the breaker is attached to the bus bar. And you can do some research on that. And the screws are missing at the panel. and you could take the dead front cover off or not. Um, you're not required to, but I'm going to. Okay, again, you're not required to remove the dead front cover. Um, it's a good idea not to. If you touch anything inside, you'll probably get electrocuted, and that's fatal. But I'm gonna take some pictures, and we have a defect, so this is great. Um, we have a bee nest, bee's nest inside. It's old, it's not active, but it really should be removed. And we have a lot of grounding wires that are not connected. And it looks like they're just twisted together, and that's improper. You want a good grounding connection, and it's really loaded up. So we have multiple neutrals under single lugs. And I'm looking for 
big fat breakers on small gauge wires and that all looks good. Okay, so I'm kind of happy with that, but I'm going to ask an electrician to come and take a look at that because um, that is a defect and those grounding wires are a defect and multiple lugs are a defect. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on. I don't have screws to put the dead front cover back on, but uh, I'll put that in the report. And if I have some extra screws in my tool bag, I'll just add them on just for safety. All right. Nice. Okay, let's go to the air conditioner system. I'm near the uh, electrical system, um, air conditioning system, and it's old. I bet it's original to the house, which is pretty amazing. So it's, it's done a really good job, but I have a narrative in my report about old systems not being reliable, needing a lot of um, close monitoring because an old system can fail at any moment and a home inspection doesn't predict uh, uh, failures, future uh, conditions or future weather conditions or, or future problems that might, it's not a prediction of future events. But if this thing turns on, we'll turn it on um, that's great, but I'm going to tell my client, start budgeting for a new one. And if this is a real estate transaction, maybe negotiate. Okay. I don't like the clearance around the, the unit. There's supposed to be three feet from all sides. So this thing can breathe. There's a lot, there's a big fan moving a lot of air and it needs a lot of, um, um, space for circulation. The other thing is, um, the label. I take pictures of every manufacturing label on air conditioners, um, heating systems, hot water tanks. And if I can't read it, then that's two things. One, I can't help my client determine more information about the unit and I can't um, see the age of the unit. And also just a worn out label means uh, this unit is pretty old. Uh, the suction line, which is the large diameter line, this is liquid, this is suction, uh, should be insulated. And it's not so this insulation is in poor shape and it looks like the whole thing needs to be replaced that's pretty easy to do got some electrical lines here one is um, an attachment here unfortunately they put it here so i can't see what's going on and it's locked but this looks like um, the utility company did something on the outside to help the homeowner save energy um, and it's a monitoring system um, the fins need to be cleaned and serviced every year. And so the homeowner can do this with a gardening hose. Uh, they have a faucet here with a hose and they can wash off the fins. And right now the fins are clogged, dirty. And they usually clog a lot when there isn't a lot of space. So um, it's, it's another reason to um, have a lot of space. But again, my recommendation probably isn't gonna be followed because there's nowhere else to move this thing. The fence is right here. No one's gonna move the fence because of property line problems. And um, so uh, I'll just make the recommendation and that's what we do as home inspectors. Some of our recommendations just aren't applicable to the real life situation that people go through. But we'll write the report anyways. Okay, so I'll turn that back on when we get to the thermostat inside. That is the backyard. Um, I don't inspect fences, but if I see a defect on the fence, I'll put it in the report just as courtesy. So here are my exterior pictures. We'll run through them real quick. Again, I'm picture happy. Um, I hold my phone uh, vertically and with my thumb, I press the photo button. So it's going through all these pictures and it's as fast as I can snap. So those pictures I will add later if my client wants me to add them, uh, wants to wait for me to add them. I will set up my computer in the kitchen at the end of the inspection and just slide the pictures in. I'll show you how to do that. So I'm taking plenty of pictures. Not all of them are going to be in a report, but a lot of them will be because my report is the best inspection uh, marketing piece that I have. So I also do video. There's a few worn out areas of the exterior siding, but it's not too bad like by that window and down there by the window well window. GFCI receptacle 
um, because it's plugged into, I think, a gardening feature. Missing handrail at the exterior steps of the deck um, next to the air conditioner. There's one, two, three risers. The condition, the condition of the deck is in poor condition. I'm kind of concerned about this area with the flashing and the slider door, but there's a lot of cracked boards, splintered areas, and wood rot. Very old condition of the deck floorboards. A lot of cracking and poor surface. Old deck. Some major wood rot at the deck in some areas. At the rear deck, the space between the spindles is too far apart. Safety hazard. Damaged window screen at the back. Missing window screen at the rear window well window. Always worn out. This is an old air conditioner unit at the end of its service life. Missing insulation at the refrigerant line. The airflow around the air conditioner unit is restricted due to the close proximity of the fence. The air conditioner system is estimated to be at least 20, 30 years old. It could be original to the house, which is um, beyond the service life expectancy. Careful how high the main breaker panel is. It's a little difficult to reach. This is about um, seven feet or so above the floor. The electrical panel is a Zinsco panel, so we need an electrician to come and inspect it further. Foreign material inside the electrical panel. Double neutrals, two neutral wires, white wires under the same lug. Improperly connected inside the main electrical panel. The Zinsco panel should be inspected by an electrician. No AFCI is installed at the old electrical panel. And just some still shots of the electrical panel interior. It doesn't open very well. The lock is damaged. There's some damaged areas, especially this area by the tree. The tree has grown and pushed on the, the old fence. And the fence in general is in poor condition in some areas. Let's go to the front of the house and do the exterior and the detached garage. What we can do is, um, the process is, remember, take a bunch of pictures, click, 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 and then go back to your uh, report software, check the re report narrative that um, has the defect description, and you're going to attach a video to that defect, and then at any moment during the inspection, you can show your client the summary and go over the summary with them. And also, the key is, at the end of the inspection, you can just send the summary, you're done. You're done with the inspection, you're done writing the inspection report. You've identified the defects, you've taken all the pictures. You've also attached the videos of those defects in the summary, which you can immediately send to your client. And later on, I'll show you how you can add photographs almost instantly, really quick, as many photographs as you want right into the report. So pictures, select narratives, attach a video to each narrative, and then you have a summary available immediately. And you can then later on, put in a ton of photographs into your report. Okay, so let's keep going with the report and the inspection. All right, now we're in the front of the house, right next to the garage door of the detached garage. And we're going to do the inspection of the exterior, and then we'll hit the detached garage as well. Okay, so I've got my phone out, and basically you know, it's as fast as my thumb can snap pictures. So I'm gonna inspect the site and the environment and the landscaping and basically that is falling over. The retaining wall is falling over. And just like the backyard, we have one, two, three risers without a handrail. So this is a defect and I'll put my hand out just to remind, remind myself that I'm talking about a graspable handrail. And we have a stone retaining wall and it's starting to lean out a little bit as well. Um, retaining wall defect, so that's a defect. Um, looks like a part of the, the wooden retaining wall is missing. The walks, the steps, oh, 
the detached downspout is not diverting water away from the structure. So I'll take a look at that on the inside, look for water penetration. Um, so the grading is okay. Um, it looks like it's in a lot of shade, so there isn't a lot of grass growing, but they use it to store their bikes. The handrail is not graspable for the front step. And the front steps, well, it's worn out. So th these are worn out steps. The paint condition is worn out. And actually, um, so this and that and this frass I could pick it up for you. I really can't. There's a pout. There it is. So this sawdust um, comes from carpenter ants. So carpenter ants um, chew on wood and they spit it out. They don't eat it. And they throw it out of um, their holes. And their holes are like oval, long holes. And so they're inside and they'll chew galleries out back and forth in the wood, and they'll spit out or throw out um, the, the chewed up sawdust. So within the sawdust, if I could find a, it's probably too early to find a body part, but sometimes there's an ant body part, like a head, that'd be awesome to find. No, so that sawdust, sawdust comes from one area, from bugs, uh, and that's from damaged wood so oh yeah there's more sawdust here so um, we have wood destroying insect here carpenter ants carpenter ants love rotten wood and this wood is not pressure treated because I can see um, like the ends are um, not pressure treated and it's rotten and I'm gonna get my screwdriver and see if I can find Some wood rot. There's more carbonary ant damage. Oh, there's more carbonary ant damage. So it looks like it's moved around. So this is kind of fun to find rotten wood and damage. And so I just use my screwdriver and tap. And I'm using my ears because um, this sounds good. But when we move to the end, um, something rotten does not sound very good. It's a different sound. Uh, more sawdust here. So they're chewing up different areas of the deck. I'm gonna make that as a recommendation. Non-graspable handrail, worn out, weathered out um, condition of the surface, and we have wood rot and carpenter ant infestation. Combine that with the defect on the roof and the exterior stuff that we found, the electrical defects, the old air conditioning system, the downspout stuff, um, the value that I'm providing for um, the price that I'm charging is overwhelming. So I'm feeling really good that I'm providing my client a ton of value for getting a home inspection. Okay, next it's the um, detached garage. So let's do that next. Okay, this is the detached garage and from 10 feet away I can see some defects. So um, we have problems with the roof tile over there. That's actually, let me take some pictures. That's actually cracked and damaged. And we have a cracked and damaged tile here. We have exposed fasteners all along and we have a missing gutter. So I'm gonna combine these defects with the house roof defects and uh, that'll be really valuable for my client. Um, on the back side of the detached garage, I don't like the grading, so I'm going to look for water penetration on the inside of the garage. And again, this downspout of the garage is not diverting water away from the garage structure. So I'm going to take a look on the inside. Okay, so this is an odd thing. Not many ohms have it. Um, it's a light sensor. If you don't know what this is, um, it's, it's supposed to be connected to these light uh, landscaping lights. So if it gets um, a little dark, 
um, the landscaping lights turn on. If you don't know what something is, just say you don't know to your client and that you'll look it up later and you'll put it in a report if it's a problem. Um, security system. Again, we have missing handrail, but that's okay. And for um, any door or window, I do the same pattern. So bottom right, I'm sorry, bottom left, bottom right, top right, top left, counterclockwise. So when I inspect a door, like a garage door, I'm gonna get my tool and I'm gonna tap for wood rot. There's some weathered paint there, some weathered paint there, and that's good. So these are areas where it usually rots out. Um, so bottom, 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 top, top, all looks good. And let's open the garage door. Let's take a look on the inside. First thing I do when I go to any garage, attached or detached, is I take a look at the floor. It has to be sloped away or towards the garage door itself. So I can tell with my eyes that it's sloped, but I actually have a slope app on my phone and I can put it down and take a picture of the actual slope of the floor. So we are sloped, so that's good. Remember that downspout on the side? Not diverting water away? Well, right there is the downspout about, and we have a crack in the foundation and efflorescence. Now efflorescence is white salt deposits left behind after concrete absorbs water and dries. So all along here is efflorescence, which is an indication of water penetration. So I'm gonna take a bunch of pictures of that. And we have a, a crack in the foundation that uh, corresponds to a downspout location that's not diverting water away from the house. And we also have efflorescence up here. Oh, this is cool. So I took a bunch of pictures of that. I don't see water damaged, so that's good. Um, so the downspout could be diverting water away, further away from the house and uh, foundation. This is a minor um, structural defect. This is a hairline crack. If um, you can imagine the a quarter on edge, if you can stick a quarter inside it, um, that's a major structural movement. We don't want movement this way or displacement this way. And this is just a hairline. I'm not really concerned. Okay, what else in the detached garage? Ground faults. So looking for receptacles, wall receptacles. Every receptacle in a garage needs to be protected by a ground fault. So I'm going to get my ground fault tester. This is wired properly. I'm going to take a picture. I'm going to test it. Ah, it's not testing. So this is a defect. And I'm going to cross my fingers just to remind me that's a problem. So all receptacles in a garage need to be protected by a ground fault. There's a missing gutter on the outside, remember? I don't see any problems on this side, but, um, whoops but I'm gonna take some pictures of the wall and the inspection restrictions. I mean, a photo is worth a thousand words. I'm gonna take a picture of this because, boy, I would love to see the foundation, but I can't, because it's all filled with all this stuff from the homeowner. So I'm gonna make sure that I take pictures. I may not put those pictures in the report, but I'm gonna certainly take pictures of the inspection restrictions. Next, garage door. So let's do a test of the garage door. Okay, there's basically 10 steps to do an inspection of the garage door. Um, what I'm gonna do is, uh, I'm gonna go through them real quick. Um, the one thing I like to do is grab the detached, uh, grab the red handle above and see if it detaches the door, and it does, I can see. I'll just pull it closed again. Nice. Um, the garage door itself is plugged in, so that's good. The fastening is good. The rails look okay. But there's no labeling. So there should be a label on this opener, which is right here. And there should be a label on the door itself. 
in these areas at the bottom. And at the photoelectric eyes, let's see if the photoelectric eyes work. Ready? They do. So all I do is put my foot through the beam. And the photoelectric eyes aren't supposed to be more than six inches above the floor. So they're good. This isn't more than six inches above the floor. So that's good. The rails are strong. I'm missing labels, but I'm re really not concerned about that. The springs should have a safety wire through the middle of the spring, and I see that it's installed. So if you don't know how to inspect a garage door opener, um, Internachi has online courses on how to inspect a garage door opener. So I see the safety wire, so that's good. And the, the wheels look good, the rollers look good. Okay, I kind of like the garage door opener. It's doing well. There's one more thing I like to do, and I'm going to borrow something to help me with that. So let's try this. So why don't you step outside? And it's a non-contact auto reverse. Okay, the laser beam works. Let's do another one. This is contact. So that's a good test. So you just put something in the path on the floor flat and let the door hit it and it's supposed to bounce up. Um, I think that's it. There's no main electrical, the roof structure isn't truss built. I don't see any roof leaks. So that's it for that. But remember, we take our pictures and then we do video and we put video in our report. So I'm going to do video. Hmm of the defects. Now what are the defects? Ah. So at the downspout area we have a foundation crack. It's a minor crack. That's not a structural problem but we have afflorescence which is an indication of water intrusion into the garage wall on the left side. So that's going to be in the report. Anything else? GFCIs. All receptacles in the garage need to be GFCI protected, and this one is not. That's a defect. Any others? I think that's it. Let's do the exterior now. Video this time. Retaining wall is leaning over. Missing handrail at the front steps. Defect at the retaining wall there. Downspout is not diverting water away from the house or the detached garage. Detached garage defects at the tile roof sections where there's missing sections, the fasteners are exposed, and there's a missing gutter. Poor condition of the front porch, no graspable handrail, and Carpenter ant damage. All right, well, we're at the heating system. Uh, we have an old air conditioner on the outside, but the heating system here is relatively new. Um, and it's a gas-fired heating system. And according to the standards of practice, we are to use normal operating controls. So that means the thermostat upstairs. So I'm gonna kick on the thermostat. And there's a service switch above my head, so I can use the service switch as well. And um, I'm gonna take a look at the burners, the burner chamber, and I'm look for the air filter. If my client was with me, I would show them where the air filter is located, which is right in here somewhere. And um, to get to the air filter, 
that's right here. And this one is, uh, it's a little dusty, but uh, it's not that bad. So it needs to be serviced and cleaned, um, which means replaced. This is a disposable air filter every 30 days. The system itself, the heating system itself, needs to be serviced and cleaned every year. And what I do is, um, I don't guess, I just look for the service tag, and I actually don't see a service tag. So what I'm going to do is recommend that this unit be serviced and cleaned um, prior to closing if this is a real estate transaction or every year as part of a homeowner's routine maintenance plan. This is a mid-efficiency unit, so I get to see the burners. If you can touch the burners, it's not high efficiency. So if you can touch the burners, which I can, I'm touching them now, that means mid-efficiency. Uh, low efficiency is natural draft. It wouldn't have a fan. So um, this one has a draft inducer fan. So that's mid efficiency. And the heating system exhaust gases go up into the chimney stack and we have that defect on the top where the roof is. Okay, the only thing I see is delayed maintenance because there's dirt and dust. And there's also a separation in the ductwork. So I can stick my hand in here and touch my fingers. So this needs to be sealed up. We're losing energy. So conditioned air warm or cooled air is escaping this ductwork area and this could be easily sealed up in order to make the unit operate more efficient. So I'm going to put the panels back. I'm going to turn on the air conditioning and the heating just for a brief moment just to see it cycle through and that's all I need to do. I'm not taking temperature of the intake and out. I'm not doing a delta T measurement or anything like that. What, are, what else is attached to the system? Well, we have a humidifier, um, not in all countries, but uh, in, in all climates, but in some climates where it's kind of dry, like Colorado, you want a humidifier to turn on during the winter time to humidify the winter dry air. And then there's the gas shut off here, shut off, shut off switch above, and it's um, ductwork. So I'm gonna take a look at every room that's livable should have a supply register and I'm gonna look at the return registers as well and that's pretty that's pretty much a basic inspection of the HVAC system so that's only a few seconds I'm gonna take some pictures to put in the report and I'm just gonna snap away I'm gonna take a picture of the system here and that's the vent pipe the electric shutoff switch and the gas shutoff switch and the humidifier. But my recommendation is to not just get service and cleaned, but to do the, um, the ductwork sealant there. All right, let's go to the hot water source. So we're at the hot water source. There's a hot water tank. It fills up with water, heats it up from the flames below. And um, what I'm going to do is run water at all the fixtures. And I'm going to make sure all the fixtures have hot water. But there's a couple components that I like to inspect when looking at the hot water tank. And this is a FEIR, uh, flame resistance, uh, vapor resistant, um, uh, ignition resistant, sorry, uh, unit. So it collapses if it senses that there's something wrong with the flame below. I'm going to take a, a picture of the valve and its setting. I'm not going to touch the setting. There's the gas shutoff valve and the TPR discharge pipe extended to the drain uh, in the floor, so that's good. And it's a natural draft, and that natural draft pipe goes up the same chimney stack. And there's some valves, cold water shutoff valves, and the main water shutoff valve actually is hidden back here. So this is the location of the main water shutoff valve back here, so I'll take a picture of that. And for any water valves, I like to rub my hand underneath them to see if it's leaking. If it's leaking, it'll be wet. So I'm going to make sure, let's see what I have here, and it's wet. So we have a drip at the main water shutoff valve, and um, that's a call for a plumber. So we have a lot of recommendations where professionals are needed, from electricians to plumbers to HVAC to roof. So this is really good. Really good inspection. 
All right, that's it for the HVAC and the hot water source and the water valve, which is leaking. Now I go back to do doing video. I want to put video in my summary. So for the HVAC system, it's basically a couple seconds delayed maintenance at the HVAC system and we need to seal up that ductwork. Now for the hot water source, um, I don't have any defects for the hot water source, but behind the hot water source, we have a main water shutoff valve. Main water shutoff valve is leaking. So the video will be part of the summary. And that's it for this. Okay, let's move on. So I'm doing the interior. Now, according to the standards of practice, there's a lot of representative number of things. Representative number of doors, representative number of windows, representative number of wall receptacles, floors and ceilings and things like that. So I'm just gonna go around in each room, pick one wall receptacle and test it to see what happens. And I'm gonna use my little GFCI tester because I already know from the electrical panel, there are no AFCI circuits. So this is properly wired. So this is good. I'm gonna take a picture of that. And then smoke detectors. So I'm gonna to try to find all the smoke detectors, but I'm required to comment upon absence of detectors. So I'm gonna test this, hold your ears. So that works and it's battery backup. Representative number of windows. Here's a window and I'm in the basement and I'm gonna work my way around the house. But this uh, is an egress window actually. This is a bedroom. Um, a livable space and um, it can't be more than 44 inches above the floor. Now that's what code says and again we're not code inspectors but you can use your software on your mobile device to help you remember is it 42 inches or 44 inches and it's actually 44 inches. So this is too high actually. So um, this is a bit of a code violation but it's an older home um, and real estate agents and other professionals will say, well, it's grandfathered. Well, I actually don't care about that word, grandfathering. I inspect a home regardless of the home age. So if there's a defect like missing GFCI uh, protection in the bathroom, that's a relatively modern thing. A hundred years ago, GFCIs didn't even exist. Um, I'm gonna comment upon that defect. Um, this is another defect where firemen coming in to rescue can't be falling because this is too high. People wanting to escape out can't have this too high. So this is a defect and I'm gonna call it out. Just like the spindles of the railing that are above here through the window, the space is too far. Children can fall through and then really hurt themselves in the window well. So if it's a defect, call it out. Don't pull any punches and um, I'm gonna call this out as a defect, but again, I don't think my recommendation is gonna have any actual impact on the home. They probably won't fix this, but I want it in the report anyways. Okay, let's keep going. So we have a fireplace. It's a factory built fireplace. It's not masonry built. And according to the standards of practice, if you have a fireplace, you have to inspect the damper door. And the damper door, oh, it's not a handle, it's a chain. That was good. And then, yep, that works. So um, it's been used. A chimney should be swept by a certified chimney sweep every year. So I'm gonna add that in my report. And the flu, I'm just gonna take a picture up. And that worked. And then the firewalls or the panels, I'm gonna check for warping or cracking and I don't see any, so that's good. And the clearance um, looks okay, but I can check that. And the, the surround and the lintel all looks good. So I don't have any defects with the fireplace, except that it needs to be serviced and cleaned. Good, all right, so let's hit the bathroom. Okay, so this is the bathroom. One of three bathrooms. So each bathroom has the same inspection process that I do. 
I run water, flush the toilet, and I run the shower in the tub. So that's what I'm gonna do, and take pictures um, while I'm doing it. So let me take a picture here. All right, so I'm gonna run hot and cold water. Let that run, and then grab my flashlight and see if there's any water leaks. And I'm gonna use the bottom of my hand to see if there's any water leaks coming from the valve, like we had at the main water shutoff valve downstairs. Nope. And it's hot water, so that's good. GFCI protection for all bathroom receptacles. So GFCI protection for all bathroom receptacles. And that works. And it resets right there. So that's good. Toilet flush. Flush the toilet. Use the side of my leg to see if it moves on the floor. If it does, that's a defect, and it's not. There's a shutoff valve. That looks good. And then the tub and shower. So I'm running the shower at the same time that I'm running the water at the sink and flushing the toilet and then looking at the shower head one more time to make sure that there's adequate flow coming out of the shower. So all that looks good. It's basically trying to make it fail. You turn on all the fixtures at the sink, you flush the toilet so it's refilling and then you turn on the shower head to see if it works. And everything's working really well. The tub stopper works. The tiles I pounded on the walls. I used my hand to grab the soap dish. So everything's working well. Bathroom exhaust. We know that it goes into the attic space. And that's a defect. All bathroom exhaust should terminate outside. The surface condition is good. The floor, I'll move the tile. I mean, I'll move the carpet to see the tile and the door is a little scratched up, maybe from a pet. And that's about it. Okay, so that's the bathroom. So we're in the attic space. Another dangerous place when there isn't a floor, so be careful. You don't really have to enter any attic space that doesn't have a floor. And you want to protect yourself, so I've got my personal protection equipment with me, but I'm not going to use it so you can hear me. And what I want to do is approximate the depth or thickness of the insulation. And in some areas, it's really thin. And some of it is missing in areas, and I'll take a picture of that and put it in the report and you'll see it. So that's one defect that I see, that the insulation thickness varies a lot from only a few inches thick and absent areas to thick insulation. That's good. The roof is truss built. I'm going to identify the, the structure of the roof and I'm going to look for roof leaks. Remember that chimney stack defect? Well, that's way over there. Can't see anything. I'll shine my flashlight to see if I can see something from my vantage point, but I'm not moving any more than this. And I also see a couple of other defects. All bathroom exhaust fans should terminate outside. And I see one, two, it's probably the second floor bathroom and master bathroom exhaust fans that are blowing into the insulation. So that's a minor defect. Mm, we we'll probably need a contractor to help us out with that. And I'll take a look around with my flashlight to look for structural problems. I don't want any modified trusses and I'm gonna look for roof leaks. Those are my two concerns and anything else that pops up 
and the insulation. And we have a, a house fan here, and um, I'll, I'll take a picture of that as well. But um, the insulation is the main concern. All right, so I'll take pictures now and put that in the report. So we are inspecting the interior staircase and there should be a handrail for all of the steps. So right here, there isn't a handrail that goes with the steps. There's a handrail up here. It's really a guard up here, but there isn't anything to hold on to here. And also as I turn the corner from this landing, there isn't anything from here to until way down there. So that's not good. So we're missing a handrail. The second thing is, I'll take a picture of that, missing a handrail. And the second thing is the space between the spindles is too far apart. It's, too, it's large enough for a child to fall through. And code, standard, building practices require that the, the space be um, um, smaller. And someone may say, well, that it's grandfathered because it's an older home, but I inspect a home without any regard to the date or the age of the home. So this is a safety feature. It's a defect, and I'm going to put it in the report. Let me show you what the software looks like so you can write your report on the fly. So I have all those things, doors, windows, switches, floors, etc. And I'm on switches and fixtures, and I'm going to floors next. And I click that I inspected the floors, walls, and ceilings. And I really don't have any defects. Next is stairs. And next is railings, railings, guards, and handrails. And we know that we have a, a missing handrail and a guard problem. So I inspected the guards, click that. Here's the defect list. And I'm going to choose my defect and attach a video to it so that it can appear in the summary. So I click the defect and there's my button for the video. There's a missing handrail at the interior steps. There's a few steps here that simply do not have a handrail as you go down. And as you turn, there's no handrail. And so that's the video and the software tells me it's in that section there. And we have another defect. It's that uh, space between the spindles is too far apart at the stair guard, the stair guard opening. So I click that and I click the button to add a video. So it pops into the summary. The stair guard is too far apart in between the spindles. Nice short video. And I keep moving on. So next is smoke detectors. And at the top, uh, I can remind myself about some standards for smoke detectors. So I look really smart. And that helps me write a really good report. So imagine that I'm at the kitchen table um, on site right after the inspection or I'm back at the office. And what I wanna do is um, create a really nice looking inspection report and with pictures and video. So you remember I had my um, camera and I was taking pictures and video during the inspection. And um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull those pictures and video off of my uh, camera into a folder on my computer. And so I'll take those pictures and pull them into the software. So that's one of the um, tips uh, to create a, an inspection report. It's simply drag and dropping, um, pulling it off of your camera and throwing it into the software so that your reports are really robust and they look great with pictures and video. But it's got to be quick. I need to manage my time. And if I'm on site doing this and my client wants to wait for the entire report, I'll do it. But it can only be just for a few more minutes because I've got to get to the next job. And I don't want to write inspection reports at night. So it's all about being quick, taking pictures really quick, taking videos really quick and sticking them in the narrative just where you want them and having a summary ready and then throwing some pictures um, into the report as quick as possible. All right, so let me show you what it looks like. Okay, so here um, is all of the pictures from my inspection that I pulled on my camera. 
and here I dragged and dropped them into a folder on my computer on my laptop and here's the software that I'm using and um, we could take a look at the software right now actually the report so here's what the report looks like viewing the full report I inspected almost a hundred things but I'm not done with the report um, 14 minor defects 38 major defects and uh, no material defects here's the summary um, all those pictures and videos lots of videos right and some of the pictures we threw in so this is a really nice summary of all the problems in the home that's excellent okay now the report itself the full report Oh, it's chopped up into uh, sections here, like tabs. So I have limitations. So here's a video that I recommend. Um, that's another inspection tip for re report writing. Um, just shoot a video about um, why it's important for your client the to client attend. Did not attend. We invited the client to attend their home inspection. Unfortunately, the client did not attend the home inspection. So um, I put that video in my inspection report every inspection report where my client doesn't attend and there's the standards of practice and then um, let's get it into the report itself so it looks like that I have another a video about um, how important it is to read your home maintenance book here's another one about scheduling an annual home inspection here's the buyback guarantee here's the roof and all the pictures there that's pretty good there's some illustrations another good tip um, to make your report look really nice is to add illustrations and that's from InterNACHI's gallery um, and so the pictures are worth a thousand words right and video is really incredible um, this these pictures are just um, the pictures that I took quickly during the inspection they're not identifying defects um, the ones that are major material defects or major defects those are the videos right so these are the problems so the video helps with the defects. Now let's say I wanted to add pictures, right? So, cause the report looks really good. So let's add some pictures to, oh, I don't know. Let's, let's go to the, um, how about the bathrooms? I flushed all the toilets. So that's one of the things. Um, on my phone, you'll see bathroom toilets, sinks and tubs and showers the exhaust fan, the GFCI, all these things I have to inspect in every bathroom. But let's say I flushed all the toilets. Well, I'm going to go back to my pictures, right? And these aren't these aren't the toilets, but I'm going to pick um, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. And I'm going to drag them into where my bathroom is. There they are. Bam. I mean, that's fast. And that's now going to be in the report. Um, GFCIs. Let's see if I wanted to have some GFCI pictures. So I, I just, um, where's my GFCI pictures? Well, here's, let's say there's two of them. I just grab it in there, boom. And then uh, let's see the heat source. Let's say there's a heat source in the back. There wasn't, but let's say there's a problem. Well, I had four pictures. I was just drag and drop them. Now you can see, right, that this is going to be a really good report. And one of the best marketing pieces that you can create is a fantastic home inspection report. So let's say there's the steps, right? And we had, um, oh, the railings and guards. Remember inspecting the railings and guards? And we had problems with the uh, space between the spindles. Well, I added an illustration as well. What if I wanted to add some additional photos? But let's say um, there's there, there, there four pictures right slam that is really fast now it looks really beautiful right it's got extra pictures in there let's take a look at the report and let's jump down to bathrooms <laughs> there's the bathrooms remember I, I threw in any kind of picture but these are your bathroom uh, toilet pictures right and there's some GFCI pictures and there's some heat source pictures it looks really beautiful that is a beautiful looking inspection report filled with a lot of videos and pictures. We're in the kitchen and this is actually where I'd like to end the inspection so that I can go over the summary 
um, with my clients and maybe go over some other things like, um, oh, any kind of agreements that we need to pass out or home maintenance books and things like that. I'll show that to you. So every kitchen, I do the same thing. I start with a stove. So I'll turn on everything and make sure everything just turns on. Um, I'm not an expert in any appliance. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to look to see if everything's turning on. Everything's turning on. So I don't want to cook anything and be careful. So that's turning on. Wait for this to turn on. Yep. Okay. I don't want to burn my hand. Done. Done. Don't leave the stove and oven without turning everything off. You don't want to have somebody come home with an oven that's on 450. Um, the microwave, you can get out your microwave detector and uh, see if it turns on. But what I like to do is I like to get a, um, a wet rag. I'm just going to borrow a rag. In about 10 seconds or so and see if it warms up. I just want to see, this is my basic test to see if the microwave warms up this wet rag here. Yep. And it does. So I know it works. I don't know if it's going to cook eggs or anything, but it's certainly going to pass that test. So I want to make sure that is in my report. Um, GFCIs, all counter receptacles need to be GFCI protected. So I'm going to get my tester out and that's wired properly. I'll test it and it pops off. I'll reset it. So we're good to go. So that worked. And um, I'm going to run water at the sink, hot and cold. I have a garbage disposal and that's at there. And also have a dishwasher and I'll run a short cycle. And I'll just let that run. And if it happens to leak while I'm here, oh, that's fantastic. But I just want to make sure it turns on, runs, and it doesn't leak. And I'm going to take a picture of the inspection restrictions underneath the sink. And then get, my, get out my flashlight and make sure that nothing is leaking. Garbage disposal wire is attached. That's good. Drain traps are good. I don't see any water leaks. I see the valves. So everything's okay in there. No leaks. And I hear the dishwasher running. And the interior of the kitchen is the same as the interior of the entire house. Representative number of windows. So I'll open up and close a window. So that's good. The surface of the kitchen is good. The ceiling is good. The cabinets. I'm not going to do all the cabinets, but I'll do a representative number of cabinets. The countertops, really nice countertops. They look good. The front edge is always the place where, you know, you can feel some imperfections, but if nothing is majorly damaged, I'm not going to call it out. So we're good in the kitchen. Now, here's where I end the inspection by going over the, the report summary, which is on my phone, and I'll show you that. But also, if you wanted to print out a report, you can put it in a binder. And InterNACHI has a home maintenance book. You can include that in the binder. And also other things like um, while I'm here, marketing, it helps you sell ancillary services while you're here. So this is while I'm here, I can do an energy report for you. Also have inside here a letter for the home owner saying that I try to keep your house clean. I put everything back. And also um, we leave a little lunchbox for the homeowner so that when they come back, we tell them that we really appreciated being in their home and to look inside this lunchbox for a gift from your home inspector. And you can put anything you want in there. All right. So just a, a few ideas, uh, some tips for you for writing an inspection report. Um, don't use no visible evidence. Uh, don't say those words. Don't write those words down. Um, somebody could um, debate with you in court on whether uh, the, the evidence was visible or not. And don't use the word evidence. 
because evidence um, conveys that uh, it's a permanent condition. So what you want to say is, and we know as home inspectors, the condition of a home changes from day to day. Almost immediately after you leave the inspection site, um, the condition of the home changes. So say things like, I observed this defect during my inspection, right? Um, so you want to write in past tense as well, because um, when someone is reading the report and it's written in present tense, um, they may be reading it three months, six months, one year after you perform an inspection. But if it's written in the past tense, that helps you set the expectations and confirm and ensure that my inspection was done in the past, right? And now the condition of the home could be very different. Um, in every report, add some illustrations, and that's at natchiorg slash gallery. Uh, you can download some really great um, illustrations to add in every report. And in every report, um, you should have some videos of yourself talking about how to maintain your home, how to change the air filter, how to clean the gutters, or the importance of cleaning the gutters. So um, have some explanatory videos for your clients that always go in your inspection report. Um, and if you wanted some home inspection report samples, we have um, several to choose from. You can look at other inspection reports and compare what you're creating to what certified master inspectors and certified professional inspectors are writing. So we have a web page just for that, uh, checking out home inspection report samples. And we also have um, inspection report classes, how to write an inspection report, and those are videos you can watch uh, of previous classes that we've had on how to um, write a, an inspection report. And we also have inspection checklists, inspection report checklists. So you can add checklists and um, standards and reminders to your software so that you can simply not remember how to, for example, uh, the 10 steps to inspect the garage door opener. Remember that in the video? Um, you can simply follow the checklist that you have in your hand and perform inspections. Um, and um, it helps reduce liability as well. When you have your inspection checklists and your software in your hand and you're performing inspections, you make fewer mistakes. So those are some um, last tips that I have for you. So that's my inspection. That's how I perform a home inspection. And that's how I write an inspection report. So feel free to contact me at InterNACHI. My name is Ben Gramico from InterNACHI. Hope you enjoyed the inspection. And if you have any questions, I'm always available. Stay safe out there. Bye. <laughs>